Welcome to Libby's Leadership Lab. I'm Libby Gill, and I'm here to help you level up your leadership skills so you can create the professional life you really want without sacrificing your personal life. I've been guiding women executives and entrepreneurs for more than 30 years. First, as a C-suite corporate exec, heading communications at three major Hollywood studios, and now as a business owner and leadership coach. So let's get started. It's time to invent your future. Well, it's that time of year. Can you believe it? The holidays are well upon us. And with all those joyful noises we're all making comes a little bit of tension and stress, but I've got somebody who can help us with that. And I'm really excited because Chiquita Jones is here and she is part of my team. Chiquita is a, is a system specialist who takes all your thorny problems and puts them in a process to put your mind at ease. So welcome Chiquita, I'm glad you're here. Thank you, I'm glad to be here with you. Okay, so tell me how you approach the holidays. Do you get freaked out or stressed out because you are always the, the voice of calm in any room? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I do not get stressed out about the holidays. I really feel like it's just the opposite of what it's supposed to be. And so I really try to focus on the things that are important, like spending time with friends and family um, and how best to do that. And that re restoration time, really getting restored, reflecting on the year, thinking about what's what exciting things are going to happen in the coming year, and just really um, taking that time. I mean, it's winter time, and I like to sleep more. I like to hibernate. I like to just uh, cozy up. So that's really what the holidays represent for me. So when you say it's the opposite of that, it's the people that are out crazy shopping, doing, making, just making themselves and others a little bit um, a little chaos in the home? Right. Yeah. I do not subscribe to that at all. I just, I can't do it. Can't do it. So, well, so what if you've always done that or that's their expectations or the kids expect this or your spouse or your family always does big presents or gatherings? Well, we can't do any of that this year, but how do you first kind of flip the expectations on yourself and, and that others have? It's that part is just a going within. Mm -hmm. It's really a going within and changing the mindset and understanding that a lot of those things really don't make the message that they're really supposed to because the holidays are about loving people and none of those things are really what reflects that love. I mean, the gifts, you love people without the gifts too. I mean, you know, the gifts are there and that's fine. It's nice. But if they're not, I mean, the love is still there. So that part, it's really kind of separating those things and saying, okay, here's what this really means, what it means to us as a, a family, as friends, and, and then, you know, solidifying that part. And what do you do when you feel like, well, we, we can't get together? I mean, we've got our little, our little COVID bubbles, but if you can't embrace friends and family, of course we've got Zoom, but is there anything else that you can see that can make people feel a little bit closer to each other or a little bit more comforted? Yeah, this year is going to be tough. This year is definitely going to be tough. I mean, I have family members that I would love to see, but I, I care so much about their safety and their well-being that it's really just the best thing for me to stay home and not see them this year in person. But um, we have FaceTime, we have phone. And this year I decided since I'm going to have a little bit of extra time, I won't be traveling. I'm actually going to do cards again. Um, that's something that I don't do every year because if time gets tight, I'm not going to stress myself out about it. Um, but this year I was like, you know, I'm going to have time. So I'll go ahead and do cards and sit down and actually write those cards out. I mean, I don't even do a tree every year, but this year it was like, oh, I've got some time. I'm going to get the tree. <laughs> right. Yeah. Do I've done my, we, we finished our Hanukkah and that was fun, mm -hmm. low key, but fun. Mm -hmm. Now it's on to Christmas because we're, we're sort of multi-faith, non-denominational family. We've got it all in one family. Um, so. 
I put the decorations up the day after Thanksgiving. That made me feel good. Mm -hmm. And so now it's now what do we do? It feels like we need a new ritual or we need something that's going to inject a little bit more fun or life. And I'm not quite sure what that's going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have thoughts for what people can do to kind of mix it up or make themselves feel a little bit better? Um, you know, I think sitting down and really tuning into what makes you happy, what do you enjoy, um, and then taking that a step further and actually doing something with it. Um, I know I've been talking to someone and said, I really enjoy singing, but I can't sing. I can could not carry a tune in a bucket. And she said, well, how do you know? Have you ever taken voice lessons? And I was like, no, because I can't sing. <laughs> and she said, well, a lot of people get training in that. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about it that way. So that'll be something that I sign up for and do. So it was like something that I enjoy, an activity that I could just take it a step further and actually indulge in it in a different way. So oh, fun. Yeah. I'll give you a place to start. Jacob's Vocal Academy online. It's on YouTube. That's oh. where I go for my vocal exercises and sing-alongs. And it's pretty amazing when you start to do that what how you expand your your range and your depth and all that kind of stuff it's fun and mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not a professional by any means but boy throw on a a, a musical uh, and I'm right right there right along with it nice. I love that that sounds really fun yeah so you said snuggle up what does that look like in your house is it favorite blinky movie hot chocolate glass of wine what's a good snuggle up uh -huh. uh, so right now um, we decorated, so the tree is up. I love lights. I love the Christmas lights. So the tree is up, the lights are on that, and we've got lights around the window that's right behind the TV. So I like having the lights off, the overhead lights, and just having those Christmas lights on. Um, sometimes it's the fireplace on Amazon Prime, uh, you know, framed in the oh, yeah, right. while I read a book. Uh, it could be wine some nights. It could be hot tea some nights. Um, yeah. Some nights it's a Christmas movie. I really enjoy Christmas movies around this time. So um, I mix it up. And I think for me, that's a little bit of what helps me not feel like something's missing if I choose to do something different. Right. I, yeah, I've, I've, I'm not, I'm not the cook in the family. Um, the husband is the chef, but I've baked two pies already. I made a pecan pie and a Dutch apple pie. And now they've kind of got the bug. And I think I, I need to get a little better on my crust. I've been watching the Great British Baking Show forever, but have never made anything that I've seen on the show. <laughs> but now I'm thinking that's, it's interesting because it, it does, it takes a chunk of time and it sort of takes your concentration. So mm -hmm. you're not really thinking about other stuff. And, uh, and I think that's, that's a great way to go too, just to get your mind onto that kind of one thing you can indulge in. Mm -hmm. Man, I wish we were getting together now. I'd love to try. <laughs> well, I didn't say they were good. I just said I made them, but uh, I do need to get a little bit better at that. But I think I think I'll do pecan squares because what I find, you know, our, our little bubble is very small. So mm -hmm. if I get left with two thirds of a pecan pie, you know, that's breakfast. So I, I got to get rid of that. So I think the squares will allow us to just freeze some and put them away and just have a few of them. So with women are still the caretakers. They are still the homeschoolers. They are still the ones that, you know, we're the ones that, that want to do it all. Mm -hmm. Do you have any special tips for women to kind of let go and, and, and be easier on themselves this year? And I know you've said change your mindset, find a ritual, but, but what else can women particularly do to let go of some of the burden and make it fun again? Sure. Um, delegate. Oh, you know, wow. it's something that we have to do in business. We have to do it at home, but delegation is, it's life-changing. I mean, yeah. it can just be magical to be able to get things off of your plate. And there are so many ways to be creative with it. Um, and it doesn't always have to take a big budget to do it. And it can be even just delegating things in the house, like housework or things like that. And also not holding on to the results. 
and being able to say, okay, it's not going to be how I would do it, but that's okay. It's going to get done. So that can be, um, and I know for myself, there have been times where I've had trouble delegating because I was holding on so tightly to, it's not going to get done the way I want it done. Right. But it, and then that caused people around me to not want to help because they knew that I'd be scrutinizing everything. Exactly. Well, I'm not going to help. She's going to do it all herself anyway. It's that's right. the same in the business world. You right. teach people that you're going to come and fix it. So no matter what they do, it's a first draft. It doesn't really matter. Exactly. So that's a good idea. I've sort of forgotten about that. I, I, and some of the things you mentioned just to take joy in, I'm going to do some cards again this year. And, um, and the cooking. And one thing that I've really found as a solace, which has been my entire life, but especially now is reading. And particularly, you mentioned that reading fiction. In fact, I think I'm going to attach my fiction list to this, to the show notes, because yeah, I'm reading a book a week right now. And I'm just plowing through um, novels that I've found captivating. I also read business books, although I tend to listen to them more at, while I'm walking. And, uh, but it's been really fun, just really indulging and sitting in the big comfy chair in the living room for like a couple hours reading a book. Yeah. And that actually, it's funny because here recently I've been doing that and it made me realize I want a recliner. <laughs> you want a recliner? Oh, that's fun. That would have been on your list. Yeah. You, you need your lazy boy with your feet up. Yes. Now, I've got a big comfy chair with an ottoman. And that is my recliner equivalent that I can snuggle up in, put my feet up in. And that's where the stockings and the lights are. Just plug those lights in on the mantelpiece, sit back with a book. And it's just, it's really relaxing. But sometimes I think we don't indulge in it. And in fact, when I started coaching, I cannot tell you, it, it surprised me for about the first five years, how many people said, well, I don't read fiction anymore. Or I don't read books anymore because I don't have enough concentration. I only read magazines or newspapers or short pieces. I can't focus enough to read a whole book. And I thought, whoa, that's that's sort of tragic. Yeah, um, yeah I think you know everybody. The average is something like people read four books a year, which is also, I mean, I can do that in a month, a couple of weeks. But um, just getting that relaxation vibe again, where you let that book transport you movies the same way. You just go with it. Right. Yeah. And that's definitely here lately. I've been reading a lot more and just getting back into it. And I've also done the same thing and started reading fiction. So that's been, it's been a lot of fun. Oh, good. I hope you, maybe you'll, you'll spot a few things on my list that you'll find fun. So favorite holiday movie? Um, right now for Christmas, it's been this Christmas. I don't know this Christmas. Oh, is that a new one? No, no. It's actually an older movie, um, with Loretta Devine and Sharon Leal and Regina King. Is oh, several fun. stars are in it. So okay. yeah, it's a good one. I, there are so many new things and the, and the beauty, even though a lot of us miss movie theaters, we have all these great movies at home. So you can just snuggle up and watch something on TV, relax, put on your virtual or actual fireplace and, and sit there snuggled up in your favorite blanket. Exactly. So Chiquita, any thoughts for um, any, you know, I love to do a leadership experiment. And while this is not exactly leadership, it is about leading your own life and determining your values and how you wanna live. Any challenges you've got for people out there to kind of stop the holiday madness and, and go into the deeper and more soothing parts of the comfort part of the holidays? Yes, definitely. Um, I would say people should solidify their evening routine. Ah. And in that include reflection over the day, how it went, things that you're happy with, things that you wish you had done better. Um, and then also think about the things that you want to do tomorrow and set a goal of three things that you want to accomplish for that next day. And they don't even have to be big. I mean, on the list last week, I had, I needed to call State Farm about an insurance thing, a question, but 
I had been putting it off. So it was that one little thing that probably was only going to take five minutes, but I needed to get it done. So once it was a part of my, I need to do this tomorrow, I went ahead and got it done. And I felt like I accomplished something. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be big, but it gives a big feeling of accomplishment. So um, solidifying that evening routine, Mm -hmm. reflecting over the day, thinking about the day coming up, that's uh, definitely changes, changes the game. Well, you also said three things, not like um, this is my list from today with like, you know, 40 things on it. But when you, when you focus on three things, you could actually do them. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. And that's it. It's like, you want it to be attainable so that you go ahead and look at it and say, okay, I'm going to do these three things. And if that's all I get done today, it was the win. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it also forces you, it adds that subliminal, I've got to be thinking about priorities all the time, or else I'm going to be doing the wrong three things. So if you know where you are and where you're headed, and in fact, I'm going to have you back, we're going to talk about setting up your 90 day plan for the year ahead, just because I'm a big believer in, you know, I'll think of that one year vision, but then chunking it into 90 days and then dividing those up into pieces. And then we didn't even get into all your systems and process expertise, but adding that layer of how do you build processes that support that? I can think of the ideas all day long, but then how do you put those into a plan where they're attainable, especially if they're not, you know, I call State Farm, yet yeah, you can do that and you have to, you have to do those things. But those longer term things, that's where I think people get really lost and they need those processes and systems. Right. I'm kind of flirting with the idea of Evernote this year. I'm not mm-hmm. sure if I'm ready for it, but all the, a lot of the writers, a lot of the people that I follow swear mm-hmm. by Evernote and how it puts things into big buckets. So yeah. we'll see. I'm trying to break myself of these lists, although I do find them very handy that, you know, I've got it in front of me and I can cross it off. Right. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, there are so many options out there and it's all about trying things and finding what works for you. Right. Right. And so where do people learn more about you and your great consulting services? You have changed my life and my business. I'm here to tell everybody that. So if you can get on Chiquita's calendar, you need to do that to sort out all your systems. Where do we find you? Yes. So you can find me at ChiquitaJonesVirtual.com and that's C-H-I-Q-U-I-T-A JonesVirtual.com. And, um, And then my email is chiquita at chiquitajonesvirtual.com. And I'm pretty easy to reach either way. (laughs) We will put all of that in the show notes so that even once you've gotten past the holiday or the holiday blues, you will still be able to get in touch with Chiquita to set up a fabulous 2021. And all of you have a great holiday. We've got one more show this year and then we'll be ready for the next year. Thank you, Chiquita. Thank you. That's a wrap, everybody, and we'll see you next week.